What's up everybody, my name is Dr. Daniel Ricciardi. I'm a functional medicine practitioner, licensed pharmacist, and fitness enthusiast. I help clients with bloating, gas, and other digestive issues that result from SIBO and other gut-related conditions so they can feel and look their best. This video is a follow-up to the one I did last week called Bile Basics. In that video last week, I discussed what bile is, where it's produced and stored, and then some of its main functions, such as helping digesting fats, acting as an antimicrobial, helping rid the body of toxins, and helping reduce oxalate levels. This week, I'll be talking specifically about the supplements for bile production and flow, and then also some considerations if you've had your gallbladder removed. Okay, so first section is about having sufficient bile quantity. One quick way to tell if you have insufficient bile quantity is if you have kind of floating or greasy stools, or if you feel like fatty foods just kind of never really agree with you. And this brings us to the first topics, or first supplements rather, which are bile acids and bile salts. Both bile acids and bile salts can be purchased in the store as supplements, but they're also produced naturally in the body. I'll explain the difference between bile acids and bile salts now, and then you'll be able to see why going with the bile salts as a supplement option may be a better idea for you. Bile acids are molecules that are naturally produced in the liver from cholesterol. Through a series of chemical reactions, this cholesterol is transformed into bile acids. And before I continue, let me explain how and why bile is actually effective. Bile is considered a surfactant molecule for digesting and absorbing fats. You may have heard the term surfactant before actually when talking about soap. Although this isn't really the literal translation for it, you can kind of think of a surfactant as having two sides. One is a water-loving, fat-hating side, and the other one is a water-hating, that loving side. Having both of these sides of the molecule is incredibly helpful for what it does. To give a real life example, consider you have greasy hands from either baking cookies, handling salmon with olive oil, etc. If you needed to rinse this off, if you just ran it under water and scrubbed for a long time, eventually it would probably get the job done, but it would take a long time. But if you reach for the soap sitting above your sink and use that instead, it definitely would remove the grease from your hands a lot quicker. Bile works by using the same exact chemistry on digesting and absorbing fats from our diet. Okay, circling back. So those bile acids that were formed in the liver, they act as a mild surfactant. So they have some activity, but they're not great by any means. However, a slight alteration to them can make them way more potent. I'm talking about the addition of either a taurine molecule or a glycine molecule. These are both amino acids. This alteration happens in the liver after the bile acids are produced, but before they're sent to the gallbladder. After a taurine or glycine molecule is added to the bile acid, it becomes a bile salt. And to repeat myself again, these bile salts are more effective surfactants than bile acids. Although these bile acid supplements are available, going with a bile salt often is a much better option. Who may benefit from taking bile salts? As I just mentioned previously, somebody that has poor digestion and absorption of fats can really benefit from having these. Somebody that's missing their gallbladder, this is an incredibly important one. Triple star this one. The purpose of the gallbladder is to store bile so that when we eat, it can kind of dump the bile into the intestines, help with digestion and absorption of fats. If the gallbladder is not actually there, the body is still producing the bile. However, there's usually not enough of it readily available to be used. Therefore, it's incredibly easy for somebody that is missing a gallbladder to not digest and absorb these fats as well, not get the energy, vitamins, nutrients from it, and may even have a tough time maintaining or gaining body weight if that's what they're trying to do. Some of these vitamins I aforementioned are vitamins A, D, E, and K, which you can become deficient in. So if you are missing a gallbladder, you do want to support bile with bile salts, very important. And the doses that you may need can vary significantly in these cases as well. Additional considerations, somebody that is on a very low fat diet, cholesterol to produce bile, and cholesterol, a lot of it comes from dietary fat intake. Cholesterol kind of gets a bad annotation for being just a terrible substance to have at all, when in reality, a decent number of cholesterol is incredibly important for our cells and body to function properly. I'm typically not a huge proponent of a low fat diet unless there's like a dire situation where you have to. Typically, if you're on a low fat diet, it also means you are on a high carb diet, which is bad in its own right in a lot of ways. 
Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is another one. This is way more prevalent than we probably think, and it probably affects a lot of people with type 2 diabetes or even pre-diabetes. It results from having a very high sugar and carb intake, which those sugar and carbs that are not burned off are eventually stored as fat, and unfortunately they're stored in the organs, a term called visceral fat, commonly around the liver and the pancreas. And when this happens, it kind of just prevents these organs from doing their jobs appropriately. As you know, one of the functions of the liver is producing bile. Finally, there's a variety of other inflammatory conditions that can kind of cause this dynamic where you would possibly benefit from bile salts. For the purpose of time, I'm not gonna go into all of these in this video. All right, so we talked about who should be taking bile salts, but how about who should not be taking bile salts? Who should be avoiding these? Someone that's struggling from a case of diarrhea or chronic diarrhea, Bile helps lubricate the colon, so if you're already having diarrhea, chronic diarrhea, taking bile salts can actually make this worse. This one might surprise you, hyperthyroid. So not hypo, which is too low, but hyper, which is too high thyroid levels. Bile actually helps convert what is known as T4 thyroid hormone into T3 thyroid hormone. T3 thyroid hormone is the most bioactive, most potent thyroid hormone that our body has. This conversion actually happens surprisingly outside the thyroid in a large extent. And a lot of it happens actually in the kidney in the liver. So normally getting this additional T3 thyroid hormone is great. However, if your level of thyroid hormone is already high, you're not gonna want this additional T3 thyroid hormone because it can make all your symptoms and issues with the hyperthyroid worse. And then the last case I'll talk about is bile malabsorption. Normally after the bile is completely finished helping with digesting and absorbing food, it's actually flushed through into the large intestines where the majority of it is actually cycled back into the liver to be used again. This is a process called enterohepatic circulation. However, if you do have bile malabsorption, this enterohepatic circulation route is not happening and you have bile just sitting in your large intestines for a longer period of time and this can lead to diarrhea. Few conditions that are actually associated with bile malabsorption are Crohn's, celiacs, and SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. In terms of when to take bile salts, definitely taking them with meals is gonna be the best time, especially if the meal is larger or contains a higher quantity of fat. This kind of concludes the section of talking about having a sufficient quantity of bile. Now we're gonna get into more of what can be taken or done to optimize bile flow. One way to tell if you may have an issue with bile flow, sluggish bile, bile consistency that's not ideal, is if you get acid reflux after eating a high fat meal, or if you have a known presence of gallstones. These supplements I'm gonna describe now all promote movement of bile through the bile ducts. The first is D-limonene. It's a product that's naturally derived from orange peel and peels of other citrus fruits. It may help clear up bile duct and promote better bile flow. And it's also been known to have some activity against dissolving gallstones that have formed. Taurine is another one that may help promote bile flow and consistency and also help with gallstones. And then polyphenols such as artichoke and olive oil, they can promote the contraction of the gallbladder and emptying of it. And this may also be good to prevent gallstones because you don't have all that bile just sitting there stagnant in the gallbladder. One final note on gallbladder removal. This is kind of a mild rant, I would say on my end, but I strongly dislike when people say you don't need your gallbladder. This is a very not smart thing to say. It's true that you can survive without it, but at a really significant cost. There are extreme scenarios when somebody's gallbladder needs to be removed. Yes, that is true. However, every effort should be made possible to prevent that from being removed, including trying the d for gallstones and some of those other things I mentioned previously. All right, that's all for that a little side rant. And I just think it's really underemphasized the importance of the gallbladder and what it does for us. Thank you all for tuning in. Hope you loved the video. If you found it helpful, please help me out and like and subscribe to my channel. I'd really appreciate it. If there are any topics you'd like to see me cover in the future, please leave them in the comments below. I post a new video every Monday at 6 p.m. Central Time. Have a great week and thanks for watching.